to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. In this week's Tech Tip, we're going to be taking a look at rendering a model into an already existing image. Now to start this off, I'm going to add a backplate to my visualized project by simply dragging and dropping it into the graphics area. Here we can see that I have my Waka model and I now have a backplate of the image of the environment that I'd like it to sit in. We can see that the model doesn't really fit in with the surroundings, so we need to adjust its position and its perspective in order to match. Now in other softwares, this can be fairly difficult, but I'll show you a couple tools that we can use in SolidWorks Visualize that will make this very easy. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my graphics area into preview mode. Along up here at the top, I'll move over to preview and select, and that will turn off my rendering temporarily. This will allow me to do a couple things. One, I can move faster as I manipulate the model around. And two, this allows me to turn on the tool that's going to help us get this in place. Now that tool is the grid mode. And if I move over to my scenes tab, we can find it from within here. Control G is also the shortcut, but its home is further down. Here we see the option in the background settings, which if we check on, we'll see a grid appear. From here, we can much more easily get this in place and get the perspective correct because we can visually see it. I'm going to start manipulating the model around. Now remember with Visualize, our camera controls are located either from within the camera tab or by using Alt and the mouse. I typically use Alt and the mouse. So here I'll use Alt and my left mouse button and we'll get this rotated around and remember Alt and the scroll wheel will allow us to adjust perspective by changing our focal length. So here we can see as I'm watching the grid, I get a much better idea of how close I'm getting. Again, Alt in the middle mouse, I can pan. Alt in the right mouse, I can zoom in and zoom out. So let's quickly get this into a spot where it looks about right. And we'll start adjusting the perspective. Now again, I'm kind of keeping an eye on these grid lines and the lines of my actual picture. So here we can see I have some creases in the wood. I have some creases along the back table that I can kind of watch and make sure we're getting somewhere close. If I need to tilt the camera, I can use Alt, Control, and the middle scroll wheel. Again, I'm just keeping an eye on where these lines are converging and trying to match those up. This will be different for every image, of course, but for this image, I'm estimating the perspective to look something like this. Now, once I snap back into render mode, we'll switch back over into fast. We'll see my grid disappear and my rendering blend into the surroundings. The next step would be to adjust the lighting to fit. Here we can see the light is coming from this area and we can see the shadows being cast off this direction. So I'll move back to scenes and I'll rotate my environment to fit. We can adjust the brightness to match the amount of light in my image. And my last step would be to blend the color. Now we can see in this image, we have sort of a vintage, interesting color grading where this sort of seems to pop out. There's a couple ways we could do this. We could go in and actually adjust the colors for the appearances, or we could render this out without the background and adjust it separately after the fact. Let's look at both. In order to adjust the appearance color, I'll come right up to appearances, select one of my appearances, and from the color, we can make adjustments. Here again, we have sort of a warm hue to it. So we can adjust this black to warm this up here. Now the difficulty with this is I have to try to match the same color shading between these multiple appearances. So sometimes my preference is to leave this alone and actually send this out without the background even though that's what we just matched it up with. We'll come back and we'll attach the two together after the fact. To do that, I'll render from here and choose a file format that allows for an alpha channel. PNG will do the trick. Make sure to check on include alpha channel and render from here. I'll just choose fast and we'll save this out. Now, since my camera was set to the same size as my backplate, I can simply add the rendered portion to the image. Here we can see I can combine the two of these together. I'm using Photoshop and they line up nicely. We see this is right in the spot where I left it. This allows me to have my rendering as a separate layer. From here, I can make any changes.
This allows me to get it much closer to the tone of the other devices in the image. From here, I save the image and we're ready to go. Now obviously this was just a quick render to show you guys the tools, but not bad for 10 minutes. And don't forget, in Visualize Pro, you can also add some animations. I've got a webinar coming up at the end of July going over just specifically animating cameras in Visualize Pro, so be sure to check that out. Well, I hope this showed you how quick it can be to render your product into an existing image using SolidWorks Visualize, and I hope to see you next week for another tech tip. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below. 